And we're on Facebook and live. Hello, world. <laughs> okay. Okay, we are live. We're alive. Okay, we're in the middle of chapter 17. And uh, Alter Rebbe is summing things up. He's taking us back to the very beginning of the first book of the Tanya, which begins with the Pasuk, Kikorai ve'lecha davar mo'ed b'ficho vavcha la'seisei. The thing is very near to you. This is Moish Rabbeinu's uh, last message to the Jewish people who are about to enter Eretz Yisrael. And he tells them the thing is very near to you. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth to do it. It's as near to you as the Siddur that you're looking in to say a bracha or to say a tefillah or a homish that you're learning or a tanya you're learning from. It's very near to you. So it's in your mouth. And if it's in your mouth, that will awaken that it will bring it to your mind. So this is the meditations of your heart it refers also to the, not just your feelings, but your mind. And meditation of your heart refers also to the, to the depths of your heart where you have feelings of love hidden away. And this is la seisei, bilavavcha la seisei, feelings of love that lead, will lead you to do it. These are the three garments of the soul. So he's, he has told us that even though most people are not in control of their heart, they, do, they cannot rule over their heart, only tzaddikim, are able to rule over their heart. <clears throat> Ordinary people cannot rule over their heart. Uh, a Benoni can rule over his mind and through his mind, he can control his heart, but his heart has a, a will of its own, so to speak. That's the Yitzhahara in a person's heart. <clears throat> and Rashayim are in control of their heart. And we gave the example yesterday also <clears throat> of the Hasidic, Hasidic Marshal, para, a parable the, why, about a person, why, what kind of a blessing is it that a person is able to walk on two feet? Because he can walk on two feet. There are two advantages to this. Number one, that he can always look up and see the heavens. And this is, of course, the first exercise of our class. Shema is to say Shema. Shema, the letters of Shema remind us of the Posuk, Su Morim Einechem. The first letters spell out the word Shema. Shema means hear, it means listen, it means take the heart. Lift up your eyes and behold, if you're gonna lift up your eyes, you're gonna behold the greatness of Hashem, the majesty of Hashem's creation the immensity. And if you're going to think into it, you're going to discover that it's even more immense than what your eyes can behold. Whether you're going to look outward to the, to the world outside of you, or you're going to look inward to the microscopic world that we live in, you're going to be overawed by the greatness of Hashem's creation. Ma rabu ma secha, ma gadu ma secha, how manifold are your works, Hashem, how great is your creation, Hashem. And these thoughts will inspire feelings of fear of Hashem and love of Hashem. Okay, that's where we're up to. And then we came on top of page 244 in this text, Lessons in Tanya, this is the text that we use. Um, two forty-three, the top of page two forty-three. Is that Rabbi Majeski there? Are you on the right uh, Zoom? Because I zoomed yes. the level two. Well, I, th I think you're in level two. Uh, I typed in the, the 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 ID that I always use. Okay, Rabbi Majeski, we're in level one. I know. What am I doing wrong? I'm, I'm typing. It's I, a, Let me tell you the numbers for level two, and you can double sec. check. <laughs> One moment. That's One really second. funny. This I thought you were joining our class. <laughs> Zoom collision. A Zoom collision. Okay, let me see. 
Okay, so your your code should be um Seven two three. Seven two three. Five five eight. Five five eight. Eight six five seven. That's for level two. Okay. You're yeah. welcome to join us. It's a very good class. <laughs> Rabbi Majeski, before you leave to teach yeah. your class, I would like to stay on for sixty seconds. I want to give a, a bracha. Today is a very very special day. It's uh, the day that the Reb, the parents of the Rebbe got married. It's a, it, was, it stands for the union of the Abishta with Knesset Yisrael. So I want to give a bracha to, to the Mahon. It should be successful. It have Hatzlocha, Lamayla, Mina, Mashur. And that all the girls should make tremendous strides. And the school should also make tremendous strides. And, 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 and the merit of all that, we should be zeich to be makabal p'nei Mashur tzikeinu v'huyu galenu. Amen. Amen. Beautiful bracha. Amen. I'm a Baruch Ms. Baruch. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. I'm taking, okay. I'm taking Add to that my, my personal blessing because today is the day also that Mrs. Pape got married. Oh, wow. I heard it's the same day as you got married. <laughs> <laughs> you should have a Shnas Hatzlocha. Amen. Brocha, a Gesundheit and all the good things you wish for yourself and your Amen. family. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And today also Mrs. Ruddle's daughter, she's getting married. Today? Yes, Brockley. Yeah, she's getting married today. To whom? To uh, Mendel Men. He's from Toronto. Mendel who? Man. Yeah. Mendel Man. From Toronto. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. are uh, getting married. Um, oh, what a in, fine. Outside fine. the Rivers house. Very, very. So the, the wedding is in here, New York. It is a, across across from the the dorm. They have a, a tent. They're going to be twenty five women and twenty five men, and then three houses down from the uh, dorm. Yeah. Um, someone was nice to offer his space, so there's also going to be a part of the party is going to be there as well. So wow, it, she's so getting fun. married on the same day. Like her youngest is getting. Mrs. Ruddle's youngest is getting married on the same day you got married. That's so wonderful. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. You should all be zeichet to get married. Bukhari Mamesh. You should have nachos from your families. Okay, so we came up to this point here. Um, Mirabel, in, the, in the bedrooms. Page 243, exactly. with this key sentence. The Alter Rebbe has put himself into a position here where it seems hopeless for the for a person who is not in control of his heart, how can he ever come to serve Hashem? Because if he's not in control of his heart, and his heart is in control of himself, um, how, then all his heart is naturally going to be inclined to any to everything that's opposite from the from Avoidus Abaira, from serving God. So how, what's going to, how's it going to get out of it? And there's a saying from the Talmud, a prisoner can never get himself out of prison. He needs someone outside to help him, to get him out, people to lobby for him and help him. So it's, it's a, a, a hopeless situation. And then the altar says, yep, so, so then who's the Torah for? Who's the Ebishti giving the Torah to? He gave us the Yet Sahara. And what does he expect? He, 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 <clears throat> so the answer is, he said, the, the, the Torah isn't given for people who are totally wicked. And that means that all of us <clears throat> have the, their shira, wow, have the ability to break out of the, uh, of the, the clutches of the Eight Sahara, which has gained control over us. And on page 243, here is this key sentence in, in, in the Tanya. You got it? Ki be'emes e'efshah l'reshoyim l'haskel avoid Hashem. It's impossible for a person who is, has done, done a transgression to begin to serve Hashem because if he does transgressions, 
he is called a Russia. A Russia cannot begin to serve Hashem. Now here's the catch. But first step is there has to be tshuva. And what does it mean to do tshuva? Now that becomes the big question. Well, the Altarab is going to devote a whole book to it. Book three of the Tanya is how do we do tshuva? The, 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 it's not easy to do tshuva, but it's very simple to understand what it's all about. The steps of doing tshuva are as follows. Number one, to admit to yourself that you did something wrong. That's hard. Nobody likes to admit that they did something wrong. You have two boys arguing and the mother says, you're both wrong. So one boy says, you know what? You know, she says, you have to admit it. So the one boy says, okay, I'll admit that I'm wrong if he'll admit that I'm right. So, so, so they agree. So the first boy says, okay, I admit that I'm wrong. And the second boy says, you're right. <laughs> Shira, you're supposed to laugh. I'm laughing. Okay, good. <laughs> so the first step is a person has to admit that he, that he did something wrong. The second step is even harder. The second step is to say out loud that I did something wrong. Which, if it's between me and Hashem, and then it's not so hard. It's, 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 it's hard, but it's not so hard. If it's to somebody else, then it's really hard. To go to somebody else that you had a disagreement with, and you knew, you, you knew that you were right, and they were wrong, and you're going to call them up and say, I'm sorry, I think you were right. I'm really sorry. That's very hard. Nobody wants to apologize. We just don't like doing that. It's very, you know. But if we don't do it, we can't begin to clean ourselves up. We can't begin to do tshuva. Now we're learning in the parsha this week. Uh, in uh, Yesterday, one of the first things that has to be done in setting up the Mishkan, at making our love, uh, which is the temple of God, and we have to apply that to ourselves, is we have to cast out anybody who is a Metzorah, a leper. A person becomes a leper if he says Lashon Hara. And we cast out anybody, anybody he, he's a total outcast. And, and then an outcast <clears throat> of a lesser degree is a person who has been in contact with the dead. A person goes to a Levaya, so he can't go into the into the holy temple if you and the third level is a, a level of impurity, ritual impurity. He can, he's allowed to go even into the, the camp of the Levium, which is around the tent. But the first thing you have to do is you have to cast out all these levels of impurity and get them out of your heart. And only then can you enter the temple of Hashem. So that that's the, the person who wants to serve Hashem, says the Altar Rebbe, clear words, you can't do it unless you, you, you do tshuva. When do you do tshuva? How do you do tshuva? Well, <clears throat> I learned when I was much younger that Jewish women, babbies, the babbies of the Jewish people, when everybody else would go to sleep, they would sit on their bed and uh, they, would, they would pray to Hashem. This was a moment when they didn't have to bake bread and they didn't have to clean the, the house and they didn't have to do the laundry. And they didn't have to take care of their men folk and their children. And everybody was asleep and they would say, and then would they have a private, private moment with Hashem. That's when you do tshuva. Most of us, unfortunately, we get to that moment and we're so tired, we just go to sleep. But no, that's, it's really a special moment that Hashem sets aside when we can talk with him and and look over the day and think about the things that we did and, and clear up, clear up all the, the garbage, delete all those unnecessary files. And, and it's very, very important.
to take advantage of that moment and to own up and to make plans at that moment. What am I, what am I going to do tomorrow if the same, if I find myself in the same situation? And the answer is, I'm going to recognize the situation and I'm not going to repeat the same mistake. That's tshuva. There you are. First of all, you have to rec recognize you made a mistake and then you have to admit it and tell Hashem you made a mistake. Call up your friend and apologize. Make Become friends again. Then that and then, and then when you find yourself in the same situation, you don't make the same mistake again. Then we say you did tshuva. And then you can start to really serve Hashem. Okay? Because when you, 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 when you do that, what makes it hard is the, the, this act of tshuva, feeling regret and admitting that you're, that you're regret, that what's hard about it is it breaks the hold that Klippa has on you. So Klippa doesn't want to let you do it. So it makes it very uncomfortable. But there's nothing more comfortable than after you did it. Then you feel so good. You feel just like on a hot summer's day, you plunged into a nice cool lake and you come out so refreshed. Shehem, because you see, the, the, the mistakes that we make, if we don't admit what they, that we did, Shehem Mesech, this, they become like a curtain, a covering, mavdil, which separates us from Hashem. And it's called in the language of the Torah, an iron curtain. How do you like that? You see, the communists didn't make up that phrase, the iron curtain. That the, 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 the Jews in Russia were under the communist rule, were stuck behind the iron curtain. They were persecuted for keeping Judaism and their lives were endangered. Well, this expression, the Iron Curtain, is the, the, the Yetzahara, the Klippa, which blocks out the light of Hashem like a thick curtain. It doesn't let the light in. It separates the Jewish people from their Father in Heaven. So when a person does tshuva and he feels regret, on the mistakes that I made. I spoke, uh, I, I really showed off when I was said that. I was just showing off. Or I was indulging in some silly luxury. I just spent, I, I had some money and I went, I spent it on nonsense. Instead of, I, I didn't give any, even a, a portion of it to a, to, to, to a charity, to the poor, to tzedakah. So, by feeling regret for these mistakes that we make, time that we wasted, time that could have been used for doing good things, or uh, you, saw, you see somebody that you're not getting along so well with them and you give them a sour look. But then comes late at night, everybody's asleep and you think back, you say, you know, wouldn't it have been better if I, if I smiled and said, how are you doing today? What's on your schedule? Show a little interest, fake it, but do it. Then you're gonna, you're gonna feel you're gonna feel better about it, and you will have done something better, because your mind led you to do the right thing. And this is shviris. This is a, a, a little bit of breaking of the hold that the Eitz Hara has, has on your heart, which is called a, having a broken heart. What what do you mean having a broken heart? It doesn't mean you're disappointed in life like a broken hearted lover, it means you're breaking the, the left, the hold that the Yetzirah has in the left side of your heart. And it comes from bitterness in your heart, bitterness in your soul, bitterness in your heart when you realize you only have so and so many days in this world. Why do you want to carry around all that garbage? I, 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 <clears throat> through life. Get rid of it. Throw it out. Tuesday night, we put the garbage outside for collection Wednesday morning. You got to get rid of the garbage before you go to sleep at night. So you have, that's what it says, says here. When a person is bitter over the mistakes that he or she made during the day, that cleans them up. That breaks the hold of the Yetzirah 
on the, on the left side of your heart. says in the Zayar, and this is why we say the 51st Psalm, Kapitel Tilim, number 51, every night, except Shabbos and Yom Tov, before we go to sleep. And what does it say there? It says, Zivchei Elohim Ruach Nishbara, the sacrifices that Hashem accepts, always accepts are a broken heart. Lev Nishbar, a heart that's contrite, etc. But all you they lev Nishbar, and the Zohar says that when a person has a broken heart, Nishbara Ruach Hatoma, the whole spirit of impurity, which is generated from the Klippa and Yetzirah, the Sitra Achra is also broken. And that's what it says. It brings the altar of brings this in, in elsewhere, not, not, not here exactly, but elsewhere. It says in the Zayar that the Yetzirah, the Abishta says to the Yetzirah, you can vaunt yourself and fly up so high like an eagle in the sky. I'll bring you down, says the Yetzirah, says the Abishta. I'll bring you down from there. But how does the Abishta bring the Yetzirah down? He, he doesn't do it alone. We have to initiate that with our own regrets and feelings of remorse over mistakes that we made. That does it. That's, that's what does the trick. So there you are. And then there's an extraordinary note here at the bottom of the page. Um, yeah. The, in his, pre his per present state, the Russia find, will find it impossible to have love or fear of God because he is in the hands of the Yitzhahara. But this is the key. He can change his whole state of affairs. He can't change it from his heart. It has to come from somewhere else. It has to come from his mind through tshuva. It has to come through tshuva. Because when a person feels this regret in his heart, the bitterness and the remorse that he's messing up his life and messing up other people's lives, that destroys the evil in his heart. And in this way, the Russia can tackle his problems at their source. Once his heart is free, uh, it doesn't rule, it's freed of the Yetzirah, so the heart isn't ruling over you anymore, constantly pushing you away from the service of Hashem, so then your mind is free to influence your heart and to arouse intellectually tikva, to appreciate how wonderful it is to be, to be able to love Hashem and even to desire this. Even you don't feel it yet, but you can appreciate you'd like to love Hashem and to, have, and to fear Hashem. And then the, the, the Rebbe goes on to say something very interesting on the top of page 244. It says, when the Torah speaks about bringing Karbonites, bringing offerings, and the laws there, it always says that offerings and sacrifices are for Hashem. For Hashem, that's Shem Yud Kei Vav Kei. <clears throat> and that's called Reyach Nichayach Lahavaya. Reyach Nichayach means a fragrant aroma. That when a person is full of mitzvahs, he's like, hmm, it's so nice when Rabbi Majeski comes on the line. Everybody's happy to see him. A person is full of good deeds and mitzvahs. It's a a it's a, a, a reach nichayach. So when, when we do a mitzvah, it creates a wonderful aroma. And the word reach nichayach is connected with the word uh, ruach. It's a lefanite. And what, it, what creates this spirit, a uh, wonderful spirit from Hashem, it's this. It's called Nachas. Sham, nachas Ruach Lefanai, it says. This is a great Nachas before me, says Hashem. Shamarti, that I asked you to do something, Venasa Ratsaini, and you, you did it. You see, we can all experience this. When you have a roommate, for instance, or a, a member of your family, and you're having a problem with them, they're not doing things the way you want. Your roommate, just will not wash the dishes after she uses them. She won't do it. And it's so annoying to you that whenever you go to the kitchen, 
You first have to wash someone else's dishes before you can do anything. Or it's very annoying to you, mom, when you come to the bathroom, you want to brush your teeth or wherever you brush your teeth. Uh, maybe it's better not to brush your teeth in the bathroom, brush your teeth in the kitchen. And someone didn't put the cap back on the toothpaste and it got stale and hard. And you asked so many times, please just remember, put the cap back on the toothpaste and they don't do it. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. and you gnash your teeth together because you're asking something so simple and it's not being done. On the other hand, just the opposite. When you ask for something and it is done, how do you feel? That feeling of gratification is called nachas. Okay, so the Abish just says, nachas ruach lefanai. It's a, a nachas to my soul. Sha'amarti, that I asked you to do something, v'nasa ratsayni, and my will was done. It was, it was done. So that applies to all of the sacrifices. Who is it for? For Havai. These are offerings, mitzvahs that we do for Hashem. What? And the Zoyer asks a question, but Hashem has two names. Name Hashem, Yud Kei Vav Kei, and the Shem Elohim. What kind, of, it doesn't say about any offering or sacrifices that they're for Shem Elohim, which is a lower level of godliness that is a source of nature. Elohim is the same numerical value as the word for nature. Hateva means nature. So on the, the name Havaya is higher than nature. Past, present, future, all at once. We kaleidoscope them into one and we get the Shem Yud Kei Vav Kei. It's past is Haya, present is Hove, future is Yihye. Take these three words, Haya, Hove, Yihye, squinch them all together, and you get Havaya, Yud Kei Vav Kei. The Shem's name, which is higher than nature, higher than time, higher than space, higher than any limitation. In the world, that's our job. When we do mitzvahs, we bring this level of God that's higher than nature into the world, the natural world we live in. It says in this Acts in the Zayar, it says in this note on page 244, what offerings are acceptable to Shem Elohim, which is nature? And it says that's what we're talking about here. The sacrifice to Elohim is a broken spirit which is a, a, a broken spirit, a contrite heart. Here's the Pasuk. Zivchet, the night Pasuk, Yud Tes 19, in chapter 51 of Tehillim. Zivchet Elohim, sacrifices to the name Elohim. What are they? Ruach Nishbara, a broken spirit. Lev Nishbar, and a contrite, broken heart. Benidke of a person who has been, who feels crushed. Crushed by what? Not crushed by roller or by uh, steamrollers, but crushed by the mistake, his mistakes. Gosh, I feel so terrible. I feel so foolish. I've just messed up so much. Yeah. Elohim lay sivze. Hashem will never, ever reject that kind of a sacrifice. How do you like that? Never. And then now we get a, a, a long footnote here. So we're moving down page 244. Good. We have 15 minutes left. He begins Chuvatato. Now the Alter is going to take us to explain this whole scenario uh, with a little bit of Kabbalah to understand in its source, in, in pure holiness. What's really going on here? The Shem Havaya is made up of four letters. Yud, K, Vav, K. Right? Yud, K, Vav, K. If we do per mathematics, I'm not good at mathematics. I don't understand mathematics. I remember when I was, what, 16, 15 years old, 14, 15, we learned about permutations and comp computations and combinations and how you do these things. So if you have four, the four numbers, how many possible configurations can you make of four numbers? You know, one, two, three, four, or two, three, four, one. 
or three, four, one, two. And how many times can you do that? So the answer is 20. You can work it out, make a little chart with boxes, and you'll see how many times you can recombine these four letters. It'll be 24 times. How do you like that? But if you have two numbers that are the same, like you have one, two, three, three, then right away, you just cut it in half. You only have 12 possible permutations and combinations of the, of the, the, the four numbers, because two of them are the same. So when we have the same Havaya, Yud, K, Vav, K, we have a Yud, and we have a K, and we have a Vav, now we have a K again. That's like the three, three principle, right? We have a repeating letter. So instead of having 24 combinations, we have 23 combinations. Says in the Zohar, I guess that's where it's from. Maybe it's from Sefer Yetzira. I don't need these books. I, I, they're puzzling to me, but the Alter Rebbe gives, a, gives us spoonfuls, little doses, incy wincy doses of powerful, powerful information. Yeah, not too much because it might blow our circuits and we don't want that. But what does he tell us? He tells us that the four letters of the name of Hashem are really the source of life of the 24 hours of the day. How do you like that? And that's why how when the Alter Rebbe was in prison, he was in solitary confinement. There were no windows, but he always knew what time it was because he could feel physically the changing flow of life into the world. Now, the 24 hours of the day, if they correspond to the letters of the name of God, we know that some days are longer than others. There are 12 hours of the day why do we have 12 hours of the day? Because we have the number three principle. One, two, three, three. That double hay cuts the, the 24 combinations in half. So we have 12 hours of the day, which come from Shem Havaya. What about the night? Well, the night is we have a different name spelled Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud, which is... We pronounce it. That's the name we pronounce of God when we say a prayer, Baruch Atah Adashem, right? That is the source of life of the 12 hours of the night. You're going to ask me a big question. I'm not going to know the answer. We, this should be the, that should give rise to 30, 12, 24 hours, not 12. Okay, it's a question. We're going to leave that question with a question mark and someday we'll discover the answer. Sometimes when you're learning, girls, you come up with a big question. You have to know when you come up with a big question, you know, don't get stuck. It says in the, you learn Gomorrah, you'll see in the Gomorrah, a Rashi. And then you have on the other side of the Gomorrah, you have uh, commentaries by the Toysifus. And the Toysifus, the rabbis of the Toysifus often argue with Rashi. And they bring arguments from all over the Talmud. It's, they're absolutely brilliant. Uh, but they don't always solve the questions that they ask, and, but they don't get stuck there. There's, after that, there's another Toysifus. What do they do at the end? They write two letters, Tzarek, and we're going to have to leave this to further investigation. So there are things in, in learning Torah that we have to recognize when we have a problem. If we can't solve it, we leave it to further investigation. The Torah is very, very big. And if we have a merit, we will come across the answer. Answer is somewhere in the, in the ocean of the Torah. And, and we'll come across it one of these days. So that's one of these questions. So, so now we, what I'm talking about here, let's not get too off track, is the name Avaya has Yud K Vav K. So it says in the Zayar or in Sefer Yitzira, and it's brought in Kabbalah, that the two letters K and K in God's holy name represent two distinct levels. Um. It says, <clears throat> with the, the, the four letters of the name of God are creative force in the universe. The last two letters, Vav K, are the source of life of this world. And the Yud K, the first two letters are a higher level. They're the source of life of the world to come, the higher, higher world. Okay. Now we have the word Teshuvah. We're talking about Teshuvah. 
What is the word teshuva made up? The word teshuva is made up of to a word tashuv, which means to return. Tshuva means return. To return, a person gets off the, the, the right path, the path of Torah and mitzvahs. He makes a mistake. He's enticed by the Eight Sahara into making a mistake. He listened to the Eight Sahara and made a mistake. Now he realizes I'm in a mess. I'm in not in a good situation. I've got to get out of where I am. I've got to get back onto the right track. I must, I must. That's called tashu, to return. Tashu is also an active verb. I, I took something by accident, I have to return it. So what am I returning? Tashu, tashuv is made up of the word tashuv with a hey at the end. What is this hey at the end? Okay, now you should be able to guess because we've been talking about it. The hey at the end of the word tashuv is the hey of the letter of, of the name of God. Because the godly soul that's in you is part of God. Chapter two, Tanya. Your divine soul is part of God. And when a person messes up and does something wrong, he, you schlep Hashem with you into your problems. Hashem doesn't want to go there. But what can he do? He committed himself to giving you a neshama and, 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 and putting this neshama inside your physical body, which is like rubber. It's insensitive to godliness. It doesn't conduct spirituality. And an animal soul, which is self-centered and, and, and pleasure-seeking. And here's your neshama with these unsavory companions that it's, 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 it's uh, stuck with them. So when, when the Yetzirah gets the better of a person and convinces him to do something not right, like, here we go, to forget to say an after bracha on your yogurt or your cup of coffee or your banana that you had for breakfast. So your Yetzirah Toiv is inside you saying, say a bracha achreina, say a bracha achreina. And your Yetzirah is telling you, come on, let's go, we're late. We're late, we're late, come on, come on, come on, hurry up. And you forget to say a bracha chreina. And you walk out of the house, and maybe you still hear your Yetzir toy whispering and say, your bracha chreina, bracha chreina, bracha chreina. Okay, you're allowed. It's not the best way. You should say bracha chreina before you get up, but Hashem is everywhere. You can still say bracha chreina. So that's what's going on, you see. And that's tshuva. Your return now, now that godly soul that's inside of you that was being cast away from where it wants to be. It wanted to say, and you didn't let it. And now you said the, oh, your, 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 your godly soul feels so relieved. You have returned the letter K to where it belongs in the name of God. Well, let's see what it says in the Tanya. You got it? any questions? Do you understand that marshal that I just gave you? Everybody understand? The little story I told, it's okay. Okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right. We got it. Hatzlach, yeah. Hatzlach. Shuhu. Okay. So this is called the lower level of the name of God, of the letter Hey in the name of God. And by doing tshuva, we're tosh over the hay. We are returning this hay because this hay is giving us life. This is the source of the life of our neshama. When we do something wrong, we're schlepping that life with us into a spiritual toilet. When the altar describes it elsewhere, it says such an embarrassment and a shame that you take the head of the king and you plunge it into a toilet, into a latrine. Smell you oh, horrible, right? And he says, and now you take it out and, and you do tshuva, this cleanses up the whole thing. Shuhu soy, guess what? This is the innermost meaning and secret al pikabola of Golis. That Golis means not just that we are in a situation of persecution and bondage and servitude to non-Jewish powers. Uh, 
Golis means that when we do even a transgression, it's as if spiritually we are giving in to the servitude of non-Jewish powers and even idol worship, right? In a spiritual level. And that's what it says. The Chazal say at the very bottom of page 244, when the Jewish people were cast into exile in the land of Edom, which is Esau, the descendants of Esau, which is Rome, which is Western European civilization, Russia, France, Germany, Italy, uh, Portugal, America, all the riots that are going on now, it's Edom, Edom, yeah? Shechina imayim. We schlep, when we do a transgression, we schlep the Shechina, the presence of God with us. And he says, not just we're schlepping God with us, but how does it happen? High note, page 245. When we behave like the people of Edom, it's not that just we physically were cast into exile in Rome and other countries in Russia and Germany and, and ghettos and so on, where there are inquisitions and pogroms. It's we ourselves are causing this. So we're Mayri to Mamshech, we schlep down the Shem, the Sham to this spiritual level with us. The spark of God, the godly soul, which is the source of life of our of our pintalayid, of our neshama. Hamalu Boshim, Bahamas, which have become uh, enclosed in the animal soul, which comes from Klippa. So the godly soul, which is the K of Shem of our stems gets its life from the K of Shem Havaya. It's, it's being cast into the, into the control of Klippa, into the clutches of the Klippa, Shabaliboy Bechola Smoli. Where in your heart? In the left side of your heart. Hamay Lechesboy, which rules over it. Ba'ayde Russia, as long as, until he does Chuba, if he's still a Russia, that's the situation. And rules over the little city, which is his heart, which is the Nefesh Ruch and the Shama. And the Nefesh Ruch and the Shama are Kavushim. They are taken, it's like they're taken captive and they're imprisoned. Bogaila Etzla in Golis, in the left side of the heart, which is the Sahara. I think I'm running out of time. Okay, two minutes to finish this up. But when you take that moment before you go to sleep, and instead of just collapsing on your pillow, you say, wait a minute, let me take a minute, two minutes, to think about what I did today. And when you think about something bad, you say, I'm not going to do that again. Hashem, and you say a prayer, please, Hashem, give me the strength. That when this happens tomorrow, and I know it's going to happen tomorrow, because it happened yesterday, it happened several times today, when it's going to happen tomorrow, give me the strength that I don't mess up, that I should do the right thing instead of the wrong thing. Let me smile and say a nice word instead of a critical word. Let me smile and say something positive. Let me think good, and it'll be good. Yeah, You know, people, that whatever you say, they tend to, 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 to be cynical, to make, they're nice people. Good people, Torah mitzvahs people, there's just a little cynical bit. They always make fun of some. Let me not be a cynical person like that. Let me, if someone says a good thing, instead of pointing out the bad side of it, let me say, oh, yeah, that's really good. You know, we should all try and be like that. What a good thing it is that person. That he's, he's not really like that, but but he's, he's, he's working to, to be better. You know, say something positive instead of something negative. Okay. So when the spirit of the Yetzirah is breaks within us through our, our regret over the moments when it ruled over us during the day, Ruach HaTumah V'Sitra Achra, this breaks the Ruach HaTumah. This breaks the spirit of impurity which comes from the klippa that's ruling over the left side of the heart. Be'ispardu Poyali Oven and David HaMelech says, 
all the workers of evil, the Yetzirah henchmen, they run away for their lives. Like the cockroaches, when you turn on the light, they scatter and run. He come in the filosa and the Yetzirah Toiv rises up from its fallen state. And the Yetzirah the Toiv, the godly soul reasserts itself, regains control in the right side of your heart and the left side of your heart. Kamoi Shikosu, Bamokam Acher, as we wrote, as we wrote, have, have written elsewhere. And with that, we conclude chapter 17, the good chapter. And tomorrow we're going to, going to go on to chapter high, chapter of life, chapter 18. So if Mrs. Yaffe could make those copies or somebody and distribute them, we'll go on, proceed tomorrow with chat. We'll return to you chapter 17. Bezra Hashem will do Chazara and we'll learn it and learn it and learn it. We're going to try and learn always to learn by pair. It said in Hayyem Yem yesterday that Mishnah, learning Mishnah by heart, like Pirkei Oves, is the letters of Neshama. And these are the letters that sustain our soul and they protect us. Learning Mishnah by heart protects us. Learning Tanya by heart protects you that the Yates Sahara doesn't even get to make a suggestion. Have a great day, everybody. Thank, thank you so much. I'm going to try to thank do 18 you, today. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Have a great day. Thank you, Rabbi. Great day, everybody.